first item of business is a member's business debate on motion 10573 in the name of Stuart Macmillan on Commonwealth Day 2018. This debate will be con concluded without any questions being put and ask those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press your request to speak buttons now and I call on Stuart Macmillan to open the debate. Mr Macmillan. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Um, Presiding Officer, Commonwealth Day uh, 2018 marks 41 years since uh, it was first celebrated in 1877. That's the first uh, simultaneously observed Commonwealth Day. And I think it's important that, uh, I think that there has been uh, cross-party support so far uh, for this uh, motion, and I'd like to thank every member who has actually supported the motion. This year, we have uh, similar events now within Scotland and the Commonwealth to celebrate Commonwealth Day. We have got the upcoming Commonwealth Games, uh, which will be held from the 4th to the 15th of April in the Gold Coast of Australia, which will be the largest integrated sports programme in Commonwealth Games history. I had the privilege of meeting two of uh, Team Scotland's hockey athletes at the Greenwich Morton uh, Community Open Day on Sunday. Uh, I wish them well uh, on Sunday and also wish uh, all the athletes at the Games uh, well, but particularly uh, all those from our Team Scotland athletes. Here in Scotland, uh, 2018 also marks the year of young people, which I think I'm quite sure members would agree dovetails quite nicely with uh, Commonwealth Day. And since its founding in 1977, it has had a special emphasis on young people. Now, the main purpose of Commonwealth Day is to highlight uh, the common ties and history of the 53 countries and territories from right across the world who make up the Commonwealth. And Commonwealth Day is always celebrated on the second Monday in March because leaders at the time noted it's a day when most schools would actually be in session. Now, this gives the opportunity for students and young people alike to participate by planning events like many Commonwealth Games, uh, simulated heads of government meetings and other events which celebrate the diverse culture of Commonwealth member nations and territories. Now, this year's theme is towards a common future, which builds upon the last year's theme of a peace-building Commonwealth. The theme seeks to explore how the, the Commonwealth can address uh, global challenges and work to create a better future for all citizens uh, through sub-themes of sustainability, safety, prosperity and fairness, which is in, in line with the theme of the 2018 uh, Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London. Now, this, uh, well, the events will also include performances, faith and civic gatherings, which include citizens from all over the Commonwealth, and there's even the, the procession which included uh, young flag bearers representing each of the 53 nations and territories. According to the, the Commonwealth organisation facts, uh, the Commonwealth comprises of 2.4 billion citizens, of which uh, two, well, of this 2.4 billion, 60% are aged 29 years or younger. That's an extremely young population. And moreover, one in three young people aged between 15 and, eight, and 29 live in Commonwealth countries about 640 million out of 1.8 billion. Now this marks uh, the huge emphasis that's placed on cultivating and shining a spotlight on the impressive talent of our young people in the Commonwealth, be it at sports, academics, uh, uh, politics, or in the arts. In the Charter of the Commonwealth, there's a dedicated section affirming the importance of young people in the Commonwealth. It explicitly states, the future success of the Commonwealth rests with the continued commitment and contributions of young people in promoting and sustaining the Commonwealth and its values and principles. And we commit to investing in and promoting their development, particularly through the creation of opportunities for youth employment and entrepreneurship. Now, these powerful words from the Commonwealth Charter echo similar sentiments to a themed year of the young people here in Scotland. Now, some of my constituents in Inverclyde participate in the Inverclyde at Malawi Schools Partnership, which connects our schools with schools in the Chiradzuli district in Malawi. Now, the Inverclyde Partner Schools supported various projects and built strong partnerships with those students in Malawi. Now, our young people uh, are the future, and by creating these connections through our Commonwealth Link, a strong bond is formed and has the potential to create long-lasting and positive outcomes for the futures of both Malawi and Scotland. Now, these bonds that uh, our young people make help form the future that we want to move towards as part of the Commonwealth. Now, the Queen, in her annual message ahead of Commonwealth Day, said, through exchanging ideas and seeing life from other perspectives, we grow in understanding and work more collaboratively towards a common future. Now, the exchange of ideas and understanding perspectives is key, especially in a time where the future can be uncertain. 
and the values and aspirations of the Commonwealth Charter, which includes democracy, human rights and the rule of law, along with the commitment of the development of free states and the promotion of peace and prosperity, become crucial as the, the guiding principles for us, uh, for uh, this family of Commonwealth nations. By celebrating Commonwealth Day every year, we reaffirm our links, our commitments, values and aspirations to each other and pledge to work towards, uh, uh, towards a more positive and common future. Now, as we mark our Commonwealth Day here in Scotland and in the Scottish Parliament, uh, let us look forward to what we can build together as part of the Commonwealth by recognising our current bonds and fostering uh, new ones through our young people. And each of the 53 nations and territories cannot achieve their goals alone. Therefore, with collaboration, uh, we can work to deliver shared ideals and common goals. Now, I look forward to seeing the future uh, that, that we will be creating uh, together with our other Commonwealth nations and territories. And uh, I would like to wish all 53 nations and territories a very happy and productive Commonwealth Day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms McMillan. I call Tom Arthur to be followed by Margaret Mitchell. Mr Arthur, please. Thank you uh, very much, Presiding Officer. And I'd like to begin by congratulating my colleague Stuart McMillan on securing this debate to mark Commonwealth Day 2018. Scotland's ties with other Commonwealth countries are well known, whether it's the names of our towns and cities echoed in other settlements across the world or our widespread diaspora. There is scarcely a corner of the Commonwealth, or indeed the globe, without a Scottish connection. My only uncle, William Arthur, was one of many Scots who in the 1960s seized on the opportunity of cheap transit to Australia as part of the assisted passage migration scheme, making him one of the tens of thousands of £10 palms. Willie, as he was known, spent 18 years in Australia working and starting a family before returning to Barhead in the early 1980s. Consequently, I am one of the many Scots to have first cousins in Australia who can regularly be seen enjoying days of endless sun on pristine beaches in smug, self-satisfied <laughs> Facebook posts. Having spoken of Australians, I must also mention two who have made a big impact on my life. The first was the piano teacher Elizabeth Jacobs, who I had the privilege of studying under during my late teens and early 20s. Elizabeth returned to Australia a decade ago, but in her over 20 years in Scotland, she was a highly sought after teacher, both at the, the then Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama and as a private tutor. With many of her students currently, currently active as professional musicians across Scotland, Elizabeth Jacobs has left a formidable legacy in the country, brilliantly embodied in the now world-class Scottish International Piano Competition, which she was instrumental in founding. I also wish to take this opportunity to recognise Dr Jane Stanley, who is a senior lecturer in music at the University of Glasgow and a highly regarded composer. I had the privilege of completing my postgraduate degree under Dr Stanley and her teaching made a huge impact on my understanding of music and compositional craft. Presiding officer, I highlight both Elizabeth Jacobs and Dr Stanley, not only because of my personal connection to them, but because they also exemplify two outstanding Commonwealth women who have succeeded brilliantly in the realm of classical or art music, a domain that for far too long had been male dominated. Presiding officer, given the size of the Commonwealth, it will not have escaped your notice that I have given exclusive focus in my remarks to Australians. However, there is a very simple reason, a constituency-based reason, no less, that you will be pleased to learn of. And that is because Johnston in my Renfrewshire South constituency is the birthplace of Sir George Houston Reid, who was Australia's first High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, as well as being Australia's fourth Prime Minister. This year marks the centenary of Sir George's death, and while he may not be a household name today, he was a significant figure in his own time. In an age when debates raged on the merits of free trade or protectionist policies, plus the Shons, Sir George was a committed free trader and the most prominent leader of the Australian Free Trade Party. Having been a key player in the major political debates of his era in Australia, a Prime Minister and the first High Commissioner to the UK, one would be forgiving for thinking that these achievements represented the total of Reid's career. However, following his tenure as Australia's top diplomat to the UK, he went on to be elected to the House of Commons, where he served for the last two years of his life and acted as an unofficial spokesperson for the Dominions during the First World War. Presiding officer, the story of Sir George Houston Reid, born in Johnston in my constituency, encapsulates the interconnectedness, shared values and identity that characterises the Commonwealth. It is an institution which demonstrates that nations with complicated and sometimes challenging past relationships can come together and collaborate as equal partners. The lesson we can all learn from that has never been more relevant.
Thank you very much, Mr. Arthur. I call Margaret Mitchell to follow by Elaine Smith. Ms. Mitchell, please. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I welcome the opportunity to speak in the Parliament's annual Commonwealth Day debate, which this year has the theme towards the common future. And I thank Stuart Macmillan for tabling the motion. The Commonwealth is one of the world's oldest political associations of states. And as Stuart's already said, today it comprises of 53 independent countries and is home to a staggering 2.4 billion people. In 1949, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, CPA, was established to support Commonwealth parliamentarians. The Commonwealth Women's Parliamentary Association, the CWP, was formed in 1989 and strives in particular to achieve better representation of women in legislatures. More generally, it seeks to promote and succeed in the furtherance of gender equality. Furthermore, the Commonwealth Charter 2013 states, we recognise that gender equality and women's empowerment are essential components of human development and basic human rights. So with this year's Towards the Common Future theme in mind, it's clear that gender equality is recognised as being in the interests of all in the Commonwealth in order to develop and progress. The, CEP, the CWP strategic plan for 2017 to 2019 therefore focuses on thematic priorities which include ending violence against women, women's economic empowerment and women in leadership. The establishment of the strategic plan has two main objects, objectives, namely to increase awareness of the existence and work of the CWP and to create a resource centre as a hub for information which can serve as an important resource to help tackle its them thematic um, priorities. In addition to this, when the BIMR CWP steering group committee met in London in October last year, members had the pleasure of meeting with the Girls Network. This is a mentoring organisation for young people. The organisation aims to inspire and empower girls from the least advantaged communities. During the discussions with the girls, the committee members explored issues such as culture and stereotyping, which can be barriers to achieving ambitions. Many of the girls said their mothers had been denied the educational opportunities to reach their potential and were therefore determined their daughters would not suffer the same fate. It was hoped that meeting with the women parliamentarians would help give the girls more confidence and motivation to achieve their goals and to realise if they can do it, then we can do it too. Finally, I want to touch briefly on, one of the, uh, on the issue of online abuse. This has increased with the rise in social media and was a subject raised at the CWP International Working Group held at Wilton Park, Buckinghamshire at the beginning of last year. It was recognised women parliamentarians need to share knowledge and learn lessons in, in order to, to address the abuse they are subject to, to by anonymous individuals not prepared to engage face to face. A good, a good example of this can be found in the work of the Parliamentarians for Global Action, which is a non-profit, non-partisan network of 14,000 legislators in 140 countries. In conclusion, presiding officer, it is crucial that parliamentarians continue to work together to counter abuse against women and young girls in whatever form that takes as we move forward together towards a common future. Thank you very much and I apologise to Ms Mitchell because the clock was not working for your speech there but you kept in time nevertheless. There's a trooper. I call Elaine Smith to be followed by Tavish Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and like colleagues, I'm pleased to be speaking in the debate today as well as a member of the CPA Scotland Branch Executive. And can I thank Stuart McMillan for bringing the debate forward. 
Since its inception in 2000, the CPA Scotland branch has continued to grow, building on existing links, establishing new ones and strengthening its role within the association. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the staff in UKIRO and in particular Scotland branch Secretary Margaret Neill for their work in supporting elected members. One of our uh, main areas of work has been the Scotland-Malawi relationship, Stuart McMillan mentioned that earlier, and I was very fortunate to lead a delegation a few years ago to Malawi to visit projects and provide seminars for committee members of the Malawian Parliament and also to expand our own uh, knowledge. And some of the projects I visited there were under the auspices of the Healthy Lifestyle Project based in Coatbridge High School, who do fantastic engagement work in Malawi and at home. A priority in recent years, uh, which is even more to the forefront in this centenary year of votes for some women, has been the work by the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians to support and encourage um, increasing women's representation and gender equality, as outlined a moment ago by Margaret Mitchell. And Margaret Mitchell, of course, is our representative on the CWP and has worked hard to make sure that our branch has input and also in reporting back on activities. And we're actually ahead of other branches in appointing a male champion on women's representation, Maurice Corey. Um, building on last year's theme of a peace-building Commonwealth, this year's theme considers how we can address global challenges and work to create a better future for all citizens through sub-themes of sustainability, safety, prosperity and fairness. And in terms of prosperity and fairness, in recent years, global inequality has been increasing. Oxfam's most recent report, Reward What Not Wealth, tells us that in the period between 2006 and 2015, ordinary workers saw their incomes rise by an average of just 2% per year, while billionaire wealth rose by nearly 13%. So it seems then that the extreme wealth of the few is rising and those at the bottom are still struggling to survive. And Oxfam's report also points out, even in emerging economies with rapid economic growth, many workers, um, including a disproportionately large share of women, remain trapped in low pay and poverty wages. So I think that this shows us that economic growth and the trade and investment that gives rise to it doesn't in itself uh, guarantee the living standards for the worst of Commonwealth citizens will improve. And with the Commonwealth being home to around a third of the world's population, many of whom live in developing economies, it's important to use our common ties and our shared commitment to justice and fairness to work quickly towards the goal of building domestic and international economies that reduce inequality and function for the benefit of ordinary people. President officer, I was recently um, in Bangladesh for the CPA executive meeting and the 63rd Commonwealth Plenary Conference. And that was an interesting experience. And due to the venue, uh, Commonwealth parliamentarians attending the conference were given a briefing by His Excellency Abul Hassan Mahmoud Ali MP, the Foreign Minister of the People's Republic of Bangladesh on the Rohingya humanitarian crisis. Following that briefing, parliamentarians from many countries called for urgent action from the international community to resolve the ongoing humanitarian crisis facing the Rohingya community um, in Bangladesh and the adoption of a statement on this matter was proposed by the CPA multi-branch and a CPA position was adopted by consensus. Um, I would have read it out, but I see I don't have time. So finally, can I just thank members of this parliament who have put themselves forward to attend events and seminars, not only to share our knowledge and experience, but to learn from other parliamentarians across the Commonwealth. But can I just make the point that engagement is becoming more difficult due to members finding it hard to be away with, um, from Parliament due to votes. I think um, with the presiding officer as branch president, the First Minister and leader of the opposition as vice president, I'm sure they would take seriously our branch ability to participate in important CPA work. So could I ask that business managers and the Bureau consider ways to ensure that our branch can fully participate in the work of the CPA, including attending executive committee meetings? Could I finish with this point? In the year of young people here, it's, it's the year of young people here in Scotland, and I thought I would just quote the Honourable Amelia Lefaka MP from Cameroon, who was recently elected CPA chair, chairperson, who said, "Over one billion young people hold the key to unlocking the challenges that we face beyond our respective borders. The CPA and the Commonwealth are truly global organisations." Can I thank Stuart McMillan again and just say Happy Commonwealth Day 2018? Uh, thank you. I'm sure your business managers heard what you have to say, but it's up to members to raise these matters with their own business managers 
to arrange whether there can be a pairing system back in Parliament uh, votes. I call Tavish Scott to be followed by Morris Corey. Mr Scott, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I too uh, thank Stuart McMillan for in uh, ensuring this debate takes place, but I'd particularly like to thank uh, Joan McAlpine, Tom MacArthur and Morris Corey who are here. Uh, the others are here are, dare I say, at hired hands on this one. Um, so actually, uh, I want to recognise those colleagues who have come along from different parts of our Parliament to speak, uh, at least I've got to assume they're going to speak, um, in, uh, in, the, in this afternoon's uh, brief debate on Commonwealth Day. Um, I must confess, I've gone through the is the Commonwealth still relevant uh, quite a lot of late. Uh, and my, one of my political heroes, Shirley Williams, sorted that out for me on the Today programme the other morning uh, when in a typically brilliant Shirley Williams interview in which she took the, uh, absolutely took John Humphreys apart in that, in that uh, as only Shirley Williams could, um, she uh, made very strong arguments, as she would, as you'd expect her to make about Brexit, but uh, as significantly about the Commonwealth in arguing its relevance to uh, this country, to the nations of the United Kingdom, but to the United Kingdom as a whole, in an entirely cogent way, which I haven't heard for some considerable time, and more of that uh, we need. And here's why, because I sometimes think that our branch uh, would, uh, needs a crisis going on somewhere before lots of colleagues from across the political spectrum would rush to our meetings. Um, but there's been huge change, particularly in Africa. I mean, at the last branch uh, meeting to talk with John Davis, who's the new CPA chief executive uh, down in London, a very able diplomat and very good to have him on board, about the changes uh, in Zimbabwe and the regime change that's happened there and what that means for the Commonwealth and what role the CPA, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association of Parliamentarians, can play in a positive sense uh, to assist that country through a period of change, to the uh, uh, even, in some ways, even more extraordinary regime change in South Africa, where finally uh, uh, a disgraced President Zuma has departed to re be replaced by uh, new President mm -hmm. Ramaphosa, who has uh, utterly fascinating um, and uh, enthralling um, background in the. Uh, pre- and post-apartheid uh, era and what that could mean for the Commonwealth and particularly for Africa in terms of the role it plays in the Commonwealth I think is uh, uh, exciting stuff uh, as, uh, as well uh, to know that Gambia has re-entered the Commonwealth and then uh, at home for us in the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and all the process stuff we deal with day in day out to find that uh, with, with good news that Canada and Australia, part of the old Commonwealth, uh, have rejoined um, the organisation, which will give it strength and resilience, which is uh, strongly uh, needed. I wanted to just make three points about why it's relevant to us here in Edinburgh in, in, and in uh, Scotland. The first is, as uh, Stuart Macmillan and others have rightly said, uh, the role that we can play, and Elaine Smith um, illustrated that through Malawi and the delegations she's led, as many colleagues from across the political spectrum have done that and it's not just been the past session it's been uh, right back to the early sessions of this place as well uh, and while we've looked at what we, what we can add there um, and where we can help in terms of not just members but I would argue every bit as importantly um, committee clerks going down to help um, with um, how that part of a parliamentary process works, then we should continue to do that. But we have to be realistic about what we can achieve. Uh, to secondly, uh, sending and encouraging colleagues from across the political spectrum uh, to take up the uh, opportunities to meet with um, political colleagues from, from different jurisdictions uh, the world over. Uh, do not be frightened uh, uh, of the attention that you might get simply because you have jumped on a plane to Ottawa, um, because the benefits uh, way, way outweigh the disadvantages uh, to making that uh, to making that kind of uh, visit. What you come back with as a member, having uh, learnt about other jurisdictions and learnt about the problems that we have, uh, that others have, uh, in, in contrast to our own fairly smooth running operation, um, also having been on the Brexit Committee all last night, I'm beginning to wonder about that. Um, uh, our smooth running operation, uh, I think, uh, it commends itself to it. And I take Elaine's point, uh, Smith's point about um, sorting out the whipping so that we can encourage more colleagues, particularly from the government party. Because there's always, always a difficulty with the government party in terms of allowing their, their backbenchers to, away to these kind of uh, visits. And the third one is rightly, I think, I forget now who raised this, but it, it is right to mention Maurice Corey, Corey as our uh, CPA women's champion. Um, we are, I think, as Elaine Smith rightly pointed out, one of the earlier legislatures to do that. It's a good thing to do. And I'm sure. Morris will be a, an admirable advocate in that uh, role and we strongly support him in, in that. So this is Commonwealth Day, we should make uh, much of it, but we should never be frightened of challenging from first principles why it is relevant in, 20, in the 21st century world uh, and occasionally resting on a few old political heroes like Shirley Williams. Mm.
Thank you. Uh, I call Maurice Corrie to be followed by Joan McAlpine. And Joan McAlpine will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Corrie, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I thank uh, Tavis Scott for those very kind words, and, and I'm deeply honoured to take on that role. I'd also like to thank Stuart McMillan for bringing this debate to, to Parliament today, and I think it's an excellent day to do it, obviously, and it means so much to many of us, and these obviously will be expressed as we move forward in the debate. I welcome the opportunity to speak today to celebrate the great partnership that is the Commonwealth of Nations. Through this network of nations that share common values, we have been able to develop strong connections that are cherished. Throughout history, the support between Commonwealth nations has been crucial, and in World War I, members played a crucial part in contributing to the British war effort, uh, participating on all fronts. In World War II, more than 8 million men from the Commonwealth served in the British Armed Forces and continued to continuing their role in supporting Great Britain in times of war and conflict and time of need. And I'd encourage members today to go and visit their local war memorials in their towns and villages and cities to see just how many Commonwealth Service men and women served in our forces and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Still to this day, citizens of the Commonwealth can apply to serve in the armed forces and the British Armed Forces, and many do so. The British Armed Forces are currently facing shortages of recruits from the UK, and citizens of the Commonwealth have stepped up to serve. For example, one in ten members of the Royal Regiment of Scotland, my regiment, were born abroad, with many members serving and living and coming from Fiji, South Africa, New Zealand, and Uganda. This system of support is a defining factor of the relationships between the Commonwealth nations. And each year we celebrate Commonwealth Day before the annual meeting of the Commonwealth Summit, allowing member states to collaboratively make decisions that will help all the citizens that are part of the partnership. This year, the summit will work under the theme, as, as my colleague Margaret Mitchell said, towards a common future, which focuses on promoting progress in the areas of sustainability, safety, prosperity, and fairness. As a member of the Scotland's branch of the Commonwealth Party Associate, Parliamentary Association, I've had the opportunity to serve, as we know, as a male women's champion. And I mentioned last week on International Women's Day, this role allows me to advocate for gender equality throughout the Commonwealth. While member states are united under common values and goals, each, each country is unique and suffers from different problems of varying degrees. Problems with gender equality is an area that all member states should constantly strive to address and improve upon. Within the Commonwealth, we have countries which are incredibly progressive gender equality legislation, like Rwanda, with the most women in their parliaments throughout the global community, and also countries where women lack representation in their parliaments, such as Vanuatu and also Papua New Guinea, where no women hold seats in their parliaments. By sharing ideas on how to address the inequality that is deeply ingrained in many of our cultures, we can effectively collaborate to find effective ways to create a more equal society. Towards a common future, towards common progress in creating equality through the Commonwealth, this is the message. The Commonwealth also allows us to connect and learn from people that we may not have otherwise had the chance to meet. And I recently had the opportunity to meet two senior parliamentary officials from the Parliament of the Republic of Fiji. I became acquainted with J Jacob Abraham and Sharon Narayan from the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. The two were here in Parliament for two weeks to shadow committees and offices and I was able to discuss with them my, import, my involvement with the CPA as, my, as the male women's champion for this parliament and other topics to do with the Commonwealth. This is a demonstration of how common bond of being a part of the Commonwealth can bring people together and facilitate the discussions of ideas, issues, and different ways of approaching problem solving towards a common future, towards, a common, towards sharing ways of thinking and collaboratively working together to achieve our goals. This is the Commonwealth. On the Commonwealth Day, there were multi-faith events and demonstrations of talent from various member states with purposes of bringing us all together and showing that the diversity throughout the Commonwealth should be celebrated. Our differences, while they define each country with unique characteristics, can also be a way to bring us together and learn from each other towards a common future, but with acceptance and honour for our differences because they make us stronger together. Commonwealth Day was the kickoff for a new year of this exceptional organization bringing together nations from around the globe to achieve similar goals. Together we can create societies that are fairer with equal opportunities for all. We can create safer communities for the people of Commonwealth. We can establish sustainable practices for a healthier environment for future generations. Prosperity can spread among all Commonwealth nations to ensure a positive and successful future. And in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, this is another year for making progress in areas that need improvement and for sustaining good practices over performing well. On Monday, we celebrate it, but now is the time to get to work 
and continue making the members of the Commonwealth as strong and influential as possible. And a happy Commonwealth Day to all. Thank you. Thank you. I call Joan McAlpine. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. And can I apologise to yourself and to Mr McMillan uh, for my late arrival. I um, got the timing of the start of the debate wrong, I'm afraid. There's been so many changes to business recently. Uh, I would like to congratulate Stuart McMillan for securing today's debate on Commonwealth Day. Um, the Contemporary Commonwealth is a unique organisation and one which enriches our lives here in Scotland, as we've heard from other members. As they have pointed out, the Commonwealth is a voluntary association of 53 sovereign states and includes some of the world's largest, smallest, richest and poorest countries. It's unique because, unlike most unions of nations, no one government in the Commonwealth exercises power over the others. The Commonwealth Games is perhaps one of the most widely known facets of the organisation, with nations and territories from all over the Commonwealth, no matter how small, able to compete as equals. And with the 2018 Games due to start next month in the Gold Coast, it would be remiss of me not to mention our very own Glasgow Games in 2014, with Team Scotland coming forth with the fantastic 19 gold medals. There's a serious point to be made here. Beyond a simple boast, the lasting legacy of the 2014 Games can be seen all over Scotland. Uh, we know about the regeneration of Glasgow's East End, of course, but the, in areas such as Dumfries and Galloway, legacy funding has been used to uh, enhance many different projects. For example, a shared use path between the town of Dalbiti and the Seven Stains Mountain Bike uh, Centre, as well as allowing Maxwellton High School in Dumfries to purchase new gym equipment. The motion uh, rightly welcomes this year's theme towards a common future, which looks to explore how the Commonwealth as an entity can address global challenges and work to create a better future for all of its 2.4 billion citizens through sub-themes of sustainability, safety, prosperity and fairness. The theme is already present in the work of the Scotland-Malawi partnership, which is a great example of the bonds that exist between Commonwealth nations. Across Scotland, the partnership celebrates more than a thousand civic links between all 73 Holyrood constituencies and Malawi. Since 2009, Lockerbie Academy in Dumfries and Galloway has developed a partnership with Tawale Primary School in Malawi. The main aims of the partnership are to develop and sustain a link between the two schools, which is equity-based, educational and mutually beneficial. The partnership touches on all parts of the curriculum, from teaching African drumming and music, looking at human rights in modern studies, and learning about David Livingstone in history. The project engages not only pupils and staff, but also parents in the wider community in partnership and encourages pupils in both schools to be responsible citizens in their local community and to understand that they are citizens of the wider world community. Examples such as the one in Lockerbie show just why the Commonwealth continues to resonate with so many people in Scotland today. And that's why the tone of the debate this afternoon has been celebratory as it should be. Uh, however, having spoken about the Commonwealth and what it is and how it enriches our culture in Scotland, uh, I did want to, before concluding, uh, perhaps quickly explore what the Commonwealth is not, which is Empire Two. It's important not to confuse the modern Commonwealth that we celebrate with a nostalgic yearning for empire. Uh, the Commonwealth is a collection of independent nations which have their own interests. Uh, and earlier this year, the UK government reached out to try to secure agricultural quotas at the WTO post-Brexit. Uh, and a number of Commonwealth members were the first in line uh, to challenge these. Uh, and at the Commonwealth the Leaders' Summit uh, in uh, London uh, in April, that's coming up, uh, they will be discussing trade, but um, in some reports in advance of the summit, uh, their trade advisor has said that they are expe expected to express support for a strong rules-based multilateral trading system uh, to explore ways to support implementation of the WTO's trade facilitation 
agreement, which for those who don't know about it, enhances support for smaller countries to build the trading capacity and better participate in trade. Uh, it will also launch a Commonwealth trade review, focusing on new technologies like digital trade and fintech and further reducing uh, trade costs. And I think it's impo important to draw attention to the fact that you know, the Commonwealth is, uh, is uh, powering ahead with its own agenda, uh, notwithstanding the fantastic partnerships that we have here. It's a, it's a modern union of equals, uh, and long may that continue. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Alastair Allen to close the Government Minister. Please. Can I check, Presiding Officer, how long you wish me to speak for? You can speak for seven minutes or till two o'clock when the next um, part of the business calls, but don't feel obliged to I speak till obliged. two o'clock. Okay, thank you. In that case, <laughs> well, that, doesn't, uh, that isn't a reflection on your speaking capabilities, by the way. No, it's very useful guidance. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I, uh, as everyone else has done, uh, welcome this debate to recognise Commonwealth Day and uh, thank also members for the many contributions made uh, during the debate. I'd like to thank also Stuart McMillan and the Scotland branch of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association for raising this motion in Parliament today. Now, as many members have noted, Commonwealth Day was marked on Monday with celebrations taking place in Commonwealth nations across the globe. The First Minister represented Scotland at the Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey, and I participated in a big lunch arranged by the Scotland-Malawi partnership here in Edinburgh. And uh, it's also important to, to say uh, in that respect too that Mr McMillan and Ms McAlpin uh, mentioned some of uh, Scotland's particular Commonwealth links with Malawi. And uh, a simultaneous lunch was held in Lilongwe, Malawi, and we were delighted to be able to connect with our Malawian partners by video link uh, and to share food stories and excellent performances by the Zatu band Girl Effect. Now, to explain, Zatu is a cultural movement born in Malawi which uses the power of music and storytelling to tackle challenging topics for young people such as the gender gap, self-expression and sexual health. Now, this focus on gender and on youth will be echoed in many of the events leading up to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in London in April, uh, where 53 independent countries participate and, as Ms McAlpin said, uh, all uh, 53 value the independence that they have. I'm pleased to say that Scotland will be represented in much of that activity, as it is the Year of Young People, I'm delighted that Young Scot and the Scottish Youth Parliament will represent Scotland at the Commonwealth Young People's Forum in April. Scotland is the first country in the world to dedicate a full year to celebrating young people, giving them a stronger voice on issues which affect their lives and in also shining a light on their achievements. Now, 2018 uh, is not just a year of activity and events. It provides us with a real opportunity to change the way that all generations work and live together. What happens locally is just as important as what happens nationally or internationally, and we want to empower our young people to become responsible global citizens who can make a real difference in the world. Representatives from the Scottish Government will also attend the Commonwealth Women's Forum where panel discussions will cover issues of gender equality and ending violence against women and girls, a theme mentioned by Margaret Mitchell and Elaine Smith, among others, today. The Scottish Government is committed to preventing and ultimately eradicating such violence, and our work to ta tackle gender-based violence is underpinned uh, by the Equally Safe Strategy. A delivery plan for Equally Safe was published in November last year and sets out a coordinated uh, uh, a coordinated uh, and focused action uh, to tackling violence against women and girls. And it includes 118 actions that we intend to take between now and 2021 to ensure that everyone is playing their part to prevent and to eradicate gender-based violence. Now, we are clear heading into these forum discussions that equality and human rights underpin Scotland's values and our country's delegations visit and, and other countries delegations visiting Scotland following the heads of government meeting and uh, I'm sure people will be left in no doubt as to our position on these matters. We're committed to continuing such engagement in a positive and constructive way, recognising that every country is at a different stage in their journey towards the full realisation 
of international human rights standards. Scotland stands ready to play its part in assisting others where we have knowledge and where we have good practice to share. Presiding officer, the, the debate today has been, I hope, a chance to mention some of Scotland's many family connections uh, with the Commonwealth and many historic connections, themes explored by Tom Arthur and many others, and indeed uh, historical links to our respective constituencies. But looking to the future as well, the Scottish Government also stands ready to support future initiatives such as Birmingham uh, in their recently announced uh, bid, or, or their recently announced hosts rather, of the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Having hosted the fantastically successful Games in Glasgow in 2014, uh, this will allow us to share experience and foster stronger links between the two cities. As Tavish Scott uh, pointed out uh, or discussed, uh, we should take the opportunity of this day always to reflect on, on the relevance uh, of the Commonwealth to the future. But I think that relevance, uh, as Tavish Scott said, is certainly there and is represented uh, in this Parliament in our own commitment to the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, which I know will continue to be a very useful way of fostering these links in the future. I will, yes. Elaine Smith. Thank the Minister for taking the intervention. It's just, um, again, the point that I made that it is becoming more difficult and I wonder if uh, the Minister would agree with me that ways ought to be found to ensure that we can participate. Well, Minister. I would be with the presiding officer, the deputy presiding officer in that respect and that sympathetic as I am, these are things all parties should probably take up with the, uh, their representatives uh, uh, um, within the, the Bureau and, uh, uh, and uh, pursue them through that route. But certainly we should uh, do everything we can to encourage people um, to, to participate in the work of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. I believe, presiding officer, that Scotland shares many of the ambitions and the values held by the Commonwealth nations around the world. We are committed to active participation in this global network and in the development of our common future. The Scottish Government welcomes the important work of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association and in particular the Scotland branch. And therefore, I'm very happy uh, both to celebrate uh, Commonwealth Day uh, and to support this motion. Thank you. That concludes the debate. And I suspend until two o'clock.